Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we have Mike Lissa and Mark Horowitz um, from NASDAQ and CCC, and we are going to be talking about how you guys can take advantage of zero fees um, with a live demo. So I'm going to pass it over to Mike Lissa. Hi. Um, CQG is pleased to partner with the NASDAQ Exchange to provide our web-based platform as uh, NFX Direct. And I will show you a short demo of the functionality shortly. But uh, right now, I want to introduce Mark Horowitz, uh, head of sales at NASDAQ, to go over some, uh, some of the information that, on the contracts that they're offering. So Mark, uh, it's all you. Go ahead. Fantastic. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Ali. Um, I, I, I figure maybe we'll start with, uh, yeah, I see the, the markets are, are up, um, and, and this is just a, a pre-recording of, of some of our markets throughout today um, as to we've, we've just kind of gotten into our new designated market-making program. So I, th I think this is, um, you know, a picture kind of says a, a, a thousand words on this, but um, I wanted to first start with kind of how NASDAQ got into this space and kind of how we got to this point where where now we're we're really engaged on these screen markets. So um, you know I, I think it goes back to around 2012 when um, swaps became futurized and uh, there there was some turmoil in the market and a lot of people didn't know kind of where they were going. Brokers thought they'd be CEFs, um and and then you know that whole uh, scheme kind of went went down. Um, it was right around that time that NASDAQ was, was looking at this space and looking at the incumbent markets and really kind of polling the, the participants and saying, you know, is everybody really happy with the status quo out there? Um, is, uh, is, uh, is, are they giving, you know, true value for, for the, your dollar? You know, and I, I think the overwhelming answer to that question was no that um, more and more people were becoming dissatisfied with the two incumbent exchanges that were effectively acting as a duopoly at that point, you know. And, uh, you know, the way that NASDAQ went about it was not just let's build this and, and see if people will come. They created a partnership around the, uh, the purpose to, uh, to, to provide liquidity and initiation, um, kind of like a mini incubator, so to say. Um, we started with 18 partners. That's where we stand now. Uh, we've had a couple come in and go, but um, they comprise the, the world's largest banks, utilities, physical players, FCMs, market makers, hedge funds um, that all comprise, you know, the liquidity on both sides of the equation. And, um, you know, where we, where we started was mostly over-the-counter markets in phase one. Um, you know, when, when we first started on our screen, we were hoping to have pricing up. Uh, and, you know, I think we've, we've grown tremendously in the past almost three years of, uh, since inception. Uh, we've, we've taken upwards of 45% market share in some products. We've actually beaten the incumbents in, in products such as uh, NAT gas options. We've done very well in the power markets. We were 25% market share in gas options last month. Um, and now the next phase really is to try and provide true liquidity and, and price comparison in, in these underlying markets. The, the whole idea that NASDAQ came with this is that we're going to provide you know, equivalent cash settle products um, that settle against the incumbents and do it for 50 to 80 percent less than the incumbent markets. So um, that's kind of where, where we're seeing here right now is is kind of our next phase in uh, in development you know uh, our, our market making program right now uh, necess necessitates that uh, our market makers be equivalent to the underlying markets uh, I think the next phase here is, is going to be in the spread market um, and then obviously as we build get more and more liquidity in the outrights but um, that's kind of what, why we, we teamed up with CQG to provide access. We, we do not, you know, have our own platforms in this. We don't want to have our own platforms in this. Um, so we're um, partnering up with ISVs such as CQG to um, provide access at no cost to the, to the end user. And currently our, our screen rates are $0.10. Cents. So 
we're an extremely low-cost solution for, for traders at this moment. And we, we also have things such as no data fees. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of good things going on right now. Um, and with these equivalent markets, we're getting more and more people interested in, in the platform. So um, very positive steps on this. Would it make sense, Mike, while we're waiting on that, for me to kind of run through a couple of these slides? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, Go ahead, Mark. As I said, you know, NASDAQ is really trying to offer competition in the space, which, you know, a little bit of my background, I was a floor trader. Uh, I worked upstairs for a couple of different hedge funds. I worked for one of the incumbents. I've been a broker. I've pretty much seen every side of this market. Um, and, and the one thing I've, I've seen is that the trade community is, is somewhat dissatisfied with the status quo, um, to say the very least. So um, it, it really behooves the, the, the whole community itself to support a third exchange on this, you know, and that's where really NASDAQ is trying to come in here um, and, and, and offer competition to, to, to the futures industry. You know, we're, we're starting out with, with the energy contracts, and, you know, our, um, our, our, our big incentives here are cost efficiencies. Um, we, we don't have uh, – we, we partnered up with OCC, which is our clearer. We have uh, – they offer things such as no cash settlement fees and significant cost savings with options expiration. Um, we we um, have look-alike cash settle products. And, you know, another incentive is that, you know, we, we offer an extra 50% capacity for um, position limits. So these are all things that, you know, the trade community as a whole is looking towards as, as advantages. You know, as you can see on this slide, we, we've had some significant milestones since our inception. Um, we're, we're almost three years into this. Most of the people when we started said that, you know, another exchange cannot and will not survive. Um, and then, you know, we're, we're beating the incumbents already in some of their major contracts, right? So I think that's really a proof of concept here. Um, in May, we doubled another exchange in our market share in gas options. Um, we're now about 4.3 million open interest contracts. Um, and and you know, I think when you look at it, it's a, a story of growth overall that, that, is, that is telling. Um, when you look at our open interest from inception, uh, on this slide, you know, it, I think it's pretty telling that more and more people are, are experiencing the market, and, you know, most of this is open interest that's come from block trading. And I, as I said, I think the next phase is going to be in these screen markets. You know, um, we initially started with, with the major uh, contracts on, on the incumbent exchanges, uh, crude oil, power, refined products, natural gas. Now we're getting into things such as U.S. Uh, shredded uh, scrap steel, and uh, we're migrating our, our tanker products from our Nordic exchanges. We're looking at Gulf Coast basis crude oil, same-day NAC gas options, zonal powers, um, and Canadian crude products will be coming up in, uh, in Q3. And, and, and I think this slide is, is pretty telling. Um, if you look at the, the cost overall compared to the incumbents, you know, anybody that, that looks at their P&L, whether it is a small prop trader or a major oil company, uh, it all comes down to dollars and cents. And, you know, we're incredibly cheaper than the incumbents for what is exactly the same product. Um, and as long as we can provide the liquidity, um, you know, that, that's all really – most traders will depend upon, you know. Um, and as I said before, we do have a number of key supporters that are backing this project and adding their liquidity to the overall project. So um, I'll kind of leave it at there and, uh, and kick it back to Mike. Um, so the desktop product of CQG has now been uh, around for about a year and a half. And we continue to uh, add functionality basis client request. That's why it was pretty exciting for us to start to work with NASDAQ to be able to get feedback, get improvements to the product, 
and be able to um, have an agreement with them to be able to roll this out to the traders uh, once again at no cost. Uh, as Mark was describing, the you know the the thought process here is let's give traders a choice to be able to trade on another market using software that they're already currently using. So the functionality and the capability with CQG on the desktop product is over here we have a control panel that is on the left hand side of the monitor. I can widen out and see exactly everything that is occurring uh, with preset pages that I have with NFX, we have the ability to go ahead and have some pages that they pre-designed. So everything, if you want to look at Brent or the Brent options or WTI, net gas, so on and so forth. And there's also a feature to add a blank page. And so the system is configurable to allow you to design your page any way that you like. So the the basic concept of the screen is each one of these pieces is called a widget. And I can resize widgets, I could move widgets, and I can do those sorts of things on the fly. So if I want to go ahead and move a widget, I can select the widget and move it to where I want to move it. Okay. Um, so. I'm on a locked page, of course, so we'll just go and add a new page. And we're going to create an empty page. And we're going to call this one Mike. Okay. And now it's saying add a widget. So we have multiple widgets that someone could add. I have charting widgets. I have different quote widgets, trading widgets. If I want to look at the options, news, or utilities. So if I want to add a widget, we're going to go in and we're going to say we want to add in a hybrid order ticket. So I can go in and add in a hybrid order ticket. So the entry mechanisms for the hybrid order ticket is I can drag and drop a trade over, or I can select the price and be able to place the trade at the price that I want. right? So what else do I potentially want to add? Do I want to add another quote board? So I can go in and I can select quotes, and I can drag and I can drop the quote board on the desktop wherever I want. So I can go in and I can select the product sets that I want to see, and I click OK. So I have the ability within the product, oh, sorry. So I have the ability to go into the product, as I said before, take and move widgets wherever I want to move widgets. I can add the widgets and be able to do those sorts of functionalities with the widgets. We have pre-canned news. So if I want to add a news widget, I can go ahead and add a news widget. And this is information that we've worked together with NASDAQ to provide you news within the product. Um, the other pieces that we have within here is anytime you're in a particular window, I can go ahead and I can view and manage the window. So right now, if I want to look at a traditional CQG quote board, I can click and change the quote board settings that are in there. If I want to look at a heat map, I can look at it as a standard heat map, or I can go ahead and I can do it as a heat map that goes across the particular markets. So with that being said, uh, the other features that you have within here is that this is an HTML-based product that will the changes that you make will follow you to any computer that you go to, and it will also resize on your phone. So you have that capability and that functionality within the product. Um, so I'm going to now start to open up uh, for questions. So if anybody has any questions, 
Uh, Allison, do you have any questions that have come in or allow people to start a question and answer session? Um, yeah, if anyone has any uh, questions, go ahead and type them off to the right-hand side in the Q&A, um, and then we'll have Mike and uh, Mark answer them as they come in. Um, someone asked for you to click the chart tab. Okay. So where, what type of chart do I want to add? Do I want to add a bar candle, a hollow candle, an area, line, so, so on and so forth? So those are the uh, chart types that we currently have that are available within the product. Where do I want to drop it to? Okay. So, uh, so we're not enabled on the historical on this one. So sorry, I can't really show you uh, an effective chart. So um, All right, we have another question that came in. I think this one's directed at Mark, um, asking about the need among traders. And Mark, you know, you were talking about uh, and effective markets and just kind of the benefit of your markets. Do you want to do a quick a quick coverage of that again and why traders would need access to NFX over other markets? Sure, sure. Um, you know, and, and just to, to reiterate, there is no charge for, for this uh, NASDAQ Direct screen um, and there is no data charges associated with NASDAQ. And I think that is really kind of two of the things that frustrate uh, traders currently, you know, the the overall cost that that they're paying to the incumbent exchanges um, adds up significantly. You know, um, way back when the the bid ask prices were were fairly wide and uh, exchange rates were you know insignificant. It was never a, a real question as to how much people were paying because it, it never became any real significant part of any trader's P&L. But as markets evolved, um, you know, electronic markets came into play and, you know, there was promised cost savings across the board um, that really never came to fruition. You know, everybody had their bid-ask uh, spread cut, you know, um, whether it was an ISV, a trader, um, on whether they're the market maker or the end user trader, um, the, the FCMs, Everybody in in the equation has had their bid ask shrunk one way or the other. You know their P and L has uh, dropped significantly. There's dramatically less uh, numbers of FCMs in the um, equation right now, uh, and and I think that the only two real people that have increased their fees and increased their overall um, profitability have been the exchanges. All right, and I, I see that as as strictly only because that they are in, in effect a duopoly, you know. They act together to to regulate their own pricing, right? So uh, it's really one of those that's a necessity for a, a third exchange to come in, as it would be in a, an airline or a cable company or any, anything along those lines where, um, you know, the third, it's usually the third participant that, that will break the pricing uh, schedule and really make it a lot cheaper for the overall user experience. Thanks, Mark. We have another question here. Um, do you have a list of FCM partners that this is available through? Or maybe if not, you know, how can a customer work with their FCM to get connected? We do have uh, the majority of SEMs. Uh, I believe we have an updated list on our website, uh, but I am not sure exactly um, the status on that with, with the, the latest updates. But my uh, my email is at the uh, end of the slide, and if you want to um, just shoot me a note and, and let me know. But um, we, we do have the majority of FCMs connected. There may be one or two outliers, but even uh, even those are, are in process right now of either using a sleeve or getting directly connected. I think that might be it for questions for today. We'll hold on for just another minute to see if anyone puts any in. Um, again, Mark's contact information is here on the screen. So if you have any follow-up after the webinar, feel free to reach out. 
You can also put your input to the CTG context if it's a CTG-related question. And one, you know, I keep saying one, one more thing, but um, we don't have any membership category. You don't have to pay a membership to, to get these fee savings. Um, the, the setup process is relatively easy. Everything goes through your FCM. It's really just asking them to get NASDAQ connectivity. Um, if you would like this free NASDAQ screen uh, powered by CQG, we can supply it. Um, that everything will run through the FCM. I've seen uh, people get connected in as little as two days, um, and everybody is, is open to enjoy the, the low-cost structure. This isn't a one-off scheme or, um, you know, vol volumetric. This is, uh, this is industry-wide on this. Thanks. We did actually have a couple other questions come in. Um, one of them, this I think is more of a question from Mike, which is, is there a trading API, or can you access NFX markets through the API? Yes, uh, you can access the NFM, NFX markets through any of our APIs, our FIX API, our FIX Fast API, our web APIs, all have the uh, NFX data and are able to trade into the NFX from those API sets. Another question is, do you support order flow and footprint charts? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Do you support order flow and footprint charts? So, yes, the footprint charts that are within the, the CQG application uh, will get the NFX data. So if you have access to those chart types, yes, it is supported um, within the CQG application. Okay, and the last question we have today is, will this be available for review? The answer to that is always yes. Uh, this will be available on CCG's YouTube channel under our webinars page. Uh, it'll, be the, it'll be posted probably by tomorrow for review. Um, and I'm not sure if NASDAQ will share it as well, but that's one place that you can find it. All right, I think that's it for questions. Thanks so much, everyone. A special thanks to Mark and the NASDAQ team for participating today and to Mike on the CPG side for his overview. We really appreciate it, everyone. Absolutely. Thanks, guys.